I am back in sunny California, and don't worry, the Barbie 350Z is in very good hands. She is being babysat at LZMFG, and I'm gonna be back there soon, but I'm excited to be back in California because I have so many updates with my cars that are here. More specifically for this video, I have the most massive update reveal probably that I'll do ever on this channel with my three rotor RX-7 drift car. This car has been through so much. It has been a whirlwind. So many emotions have been tied up into this car. So much blood, sweat, tears, late nights, everything. I think the last video I posted about the car though was before SEMA, when we were getting ready for a massive reveal at SEMA, which we did with Hot Wheels in the Hot Wheels booth. I am going to be releasing that content and everything that we've done since SEMA because the car has continued to be completely overhauled with Enticed Motorsports, Richie Works, and able with the engine so there's so much has been done on the car and I do have a lot of that content but I want to keep you guys with me in real time so I just made the decision to jump in in real time where we're at with the build right now and post the other content of the car being built after this video kind of as bonus content for a background of the build and everything that we've done because it is truly insane incredible and I am so excited to share those other details with you but I've never done videos consistently like I am now so I really want to stick with that and keeping you guys with me and today I'm going to see my car for the first time in its pretty much close to final state. It has been transformed again since SEMA because there was so much other custom fabrication work that needed to be done post SEMA because we didn't have enough time to do it for the SEMA reveal. And while I've been in Florida, John from Entice Motorsports went wild. He went completely wild in the best way. And I've gotten some sneak peek photos of the car and my heart dropped. It is more incredible than I could have ever imagined. I can tell you right now that no one on earth has a three rotor R7 setup like this. This is so insane, so incredible, and I just can't wait to see it in person. A lot has been done since I've been in Florida, specifically around the last bits of custom fabrication that was needed for this car. And I'm back in California. I'm about to see it for the first time with you guys. And we're really hoping that within a week or so, Within a week or so, I think I might be starting this car up for the very first time and hitting the dyno, which is crazy because this build has been through some stuff. We've had to completely redo every single thing on the car. This build is wild. Pretty much everything on the car is custom and it's being built specifically for Pro 2 spec. So today is the day. I am so excited to bring you guys along with me. I'm picking up my friend Bree to come with us. She is an awesome stunt driver and drifter and has a YouTube channel as well where she is building her cars. Oh, look at Bree and Cam crossing the road. Oh, and he has a little cone head on. What's up? Hey, girl. Oh, and Cam. Yes, Cam is here. Cammy. Cam's so excited. He might be more excited than you. I think he is. He's like, yo, let me see that three rotor. <laughs> He's like, let me out. Let me see it. Let me see it. Oh, my gosh. Holy crap. John, what did you do? Oh, my. Call it the snake time. <laughs> Holy crap. John, I love it! You are so right. This looks like it goes all the way through. Oh my god. Okay, so this is crazy because we were talking about this, but this was something we were going to do like in the future when we have all this extra time and like this was going to be the super extra bougie setup that we run. And now this is the first one. I started playing with the bike and I was like, no, that's not going to happen. <laughs> and then I came in the next day and I was like, okay, maybe I'll try a little something else. And I was like, no, that's not going to happen. <laughs> and then like two days later, I was like, put some shit together. Oh my oh. gosh. This is wild. Yeah, I think you were right about not polishing. It was pretty good, right? Yeah. Look at those rainbows. I put the alternator on. Um, I'm waiting for 
Okay, there's not only a lot of new in the front. This did not look anything like this no. when I left. So now you have the new fuel cell. Um, and then you could literally push on it. And oh it's pretty God. sturdy as opposed to how it was before. So. And it's all the way sunk down. I ordered a new set of dimple dies. So once they get in, I'll dimple dye it. And then it, now it's one piece. Remember this was one piece? Yeah. And this was a separate piece. And then the whole Yeah, because before we had out. this insert mm -hmm. split into two different pieces and it was for a completely different fuel cell so yeah. just it was not gonna work and this was just sitting on top of here and now this being laid in looks so good so we decided we're gonna do hard lines from here to so it's gonna we're gonna put um bulkheads okay. here here and it's gonna go into the bulkhead and from underneath it's gonna go to a uh, soft line. Same thing, bulkhead, bulkhead, hard line. And everything's gonna be labeled feed, return, uh, breather, all that good stuff. Hard line is gonna look so sick back here. Mm -hmm. And just so everyone knows, this is the same five gallon brushless air motive pump. I've just now partnered with FuelSafe as well with their new drift cell. This is a new drift cell that's coming out. It's meant to work with a lot of air motive products. So we just ended up dropping that in their cell just so that the whole car will be pro two legal and we don't have to swap it later. So this is definitely gonna be like the next biggest challenge is figuring out all the ducting yeah, for then, this. Oh, yeah, well, wait, that's the so bracket made, that Sid did, right? Yeah, so he made the billet bracket. So we had to get a custom bracket for the alternator as well. Because of the external oil tap lines, the way those were routed, it made yeah, using any it. bracket pretty difficult. So we had to make one. So it clears the fitting down here, which is fine. So you have enough room for the hard line to connect to here, right? Awesome. And then the alternator originally used to sit here, but because of the water lines, obviously it can't yeah. sit here no more. So. Yeah, I get a lot of comments on people like the way these yeah. lines are routed. It looks so much better. John, you're a madman. <laughs> it, it looks so crazy. Yeah, we well, right? said you wanted an intake, and I was like, well, you don't really need one. I was like, but if you're gonna put one just whenever the car's sitting or you go somewhere where it's, there's a lot of dirt and all that, because essentially when you're competing, you're just in the track. Yeah. Just putting a screen on there will just fine. Now, honestly, this is so cool because like you said, this is something we were talking about doing just to flex on everyone. And now yeah. we're, we're gonna do this in the future later. Well, and too much time in there. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> so to come in and find that this is the setup right Right now, I was just freaking out. John sent me like a sneak peek before I actually got here and I couldn't believe that this was happening. So I love this. John, you're so extra and I love it and it's amazing. So no, there's- no, I'm like, it's too much. I'm like, but then again- It's she, never too much. She's too much. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. I've never seen any three rotor done like this ever, so. It's I'll incredible. You know when John gets mad making something, it's gonna come out nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cause he's he's the one to like redo a piece where no one else would even tell. It was like the tiniest degree off, and he'll just chop it and redo it and redo it until it's perfect. It flares from 3.5 to 4. It should be more than enough. I mean, this is what Abel asked for to a four inch. So yeah, it should, it should work. This whole engine bay is so wild. <laughs>
I am so mind blown. This car is not only just a powerful, incredible build, it's now a work of art thanks to John and it just looks way more wild than I ever thought it would. It's basically a show drift car at this point. I am really glad that we took the time to make sure we overhauled and redid pretty much everything to make sure it was as good as possible. I am just blown away by this fabrication that John did. It's next level and I'm gonna be so excited to shred this thing on the track. Definitely not gonna run a hood the first couple times because you know what, I wanna, I wanna flex this setup. I still can't believe this is my car. I feel like I'm in a dream. Figure in this video too, since I'm gonna be catching up on videos and I know a lot of you guys are new to the channel, I will, I guess, just run through really quick some of the higher level things that are done to this car to get you up to speed. So starting from the top, this is a three rotor swapped ARC 7 FC. This engine was built by Abel, who also did the porting for it. And we decided to do a street port paired with my semi peripheral port that I had done as well. I do have external oil tap directly to all the plates so that's supposed to dramatically help with cooling shooting oil directly into the plates versus having it have to pass through so that was a modification I definitely knew that I wanted knowing that I'm building this for race performance drift performance and need the best cooling that I could possibly get um, all of the lines fuel lines coolant brake lines everything was done by Richie works and he did the wiring as well which is full Full mil spec and look at this this is insane like this is a quick release for the harness and everything is labeled and this engine bay seriously looks like the wiring has been tucked like boom everything you see here is the wiring the last thing we do have to wire up though are just the coils and that's it so the fact that this is fully wired and looking as clean as it is is pretty mind-blowing all the custom fabrication work of course has been done by John at Entice Motorsports. Oh and if you haven't seen a previous video John also made that custom manifold. Wow. For my engine as well I'm using power seals, apex seals. I have radium rails hooked up here and I'm running Graham's performance injectors. You probably saw the paper and tape here it's just protecting the intercooler which that too is fully custom so this is part of Mishimoto's new line of universal cores and we completely built everything ourselves from the tanks that John whipped up to how we mounted it here I think this is again just another example of his sit work and we have dual oil coolers at the bottom here also by Mishimoto I've also partnered with Vibrant on this build and that is why John was able to do such incredible fabrication work and I'm really really glad that we got to show that off. I'm also working with Garrett and you may notice that photos from SEMA we had a much different setup. I had a massive 5533 Garrett Turbo on here and now I'm running a Gen 2 42. We should have a good setup with a 42 and in case we need a little extra punch we are setting up some nitrous as well maybe a small like 50 shot this car is in development so after we get it to a point where it's we can start it up we can dyno it and once we start to be able to take it to the track we can dial in the setup and what's gonna work what's not gonna work we can find out all those little things so crazy man for my suspension, I have 326 power on this car running their Shockery D coilovers. And this is the same setup that I have on my Sailor 7 RX7 as well. And I'm running their wheels paired with their awesome spiked lug nuts that just, I knew I had to have these when I saw these. So the founder of 326 actually became legendary on my exact chassis. Haraguchi himself drove and drifted FC so I have the special Haraguchi formula for my coilovers which is pretty awesome. 
you may have noticed my beautiful full billet lower arms on here and this is one of the very first angel tits by omd parts for this car it's by martin and steve i love them and i worked with them in the past on the tia forte build but this is their brand new full angel kit for the r7 fc so it's a combination of things extended tie rods we have the lower control arm a bump stop modified knuckle that they modify themselves and the kit comes with spacers that has the caster preset so you are ready to rock and roll i also have my bid brake setup by r1 concepts on here we're going to be running a dual caliper setup in the rear and that is one thing i have to finalize in the next coming week or two as well my, all my wheels are wrapped in kumo tires as i'm sure you guys have come to know on all of my cars i showed you guys earlier but the setup that i'm doing for fuel is fuel safe drift tank with my air motive five gallon brushless pump which should be plenty the car isn't in the air so you can't see it right now but my transmission that i have in here is by g-force and i am running their gsr it's a four speed and i haven't ever driven one before but i hear it's really incredible for drifting and just an awesome setup to have so i'm really stoked to get this out on the track and try it out i'm running the gsr transmission by g-force which goes to a custom drive shaft and in the rear i have my 8a diff with os dyken superlock lsd in it my axles and hubs are upgraded from drive shaft shop I'm back home now. I know this is gonna be a shorter video, but I really just wanted to bring you guys there with me to see it for the first time. I'm completely blown away. I cannot believe that is my car. That is beyond just a drift car. That is a show car, race car, drift car, work of art and I can't believe we are so close to starting that thing. It has been a wild journey taking that car from where it started to where it is now. I'm just so thankful for everyone that's been a part of that build. Everyone that has put their blood, sweat, and tears into getting that car where it is now. We are so close to hearing three rotor noises. Not just three rotor noises, it's semi peripheral porter. We got a mean street port on that thing. It's gonna sound ridiculous. I really want to sit down and produce like a build breakdown version for that car. Because like I said, I have some backlog videos I'm gonna post so you guys can see more into like the rebuilding of the engine for the second time. And a lot of the process that got the car to where it is now. But there are just so many things that we've done to that car and it's just, it really needs to have a proper sit down, breakdown moment. Maybe I'll do a live stream with you guys and have the car there and talk about it and show you guys more. Give me your ideas for that because I want you guys to be just as excited as I am for this build and know how much we put into it and how big of a moment it's gonna be for me when we are actually turning it on for the first time and hitting the track. I am so glad that I got as much seat time as I did in the Z because now I'm gonna be jumping into this beast. That car is extra, I'm extra, it's gonna sound extra, like I'm just so excited and I can't wait to bring you guys on this three-rotor journey with me. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.